and sit there, grow up on Disney shit, where like, you know, the little mermaid gives up her entire <laughs> life after like two days of knowing this asshole and is like, oh my god, yeah, we're gonna be together forever. Your wardrobe screams fatherless. We have more trust Honestly, in that top side than people. Honestly, this is kind of disgusting. How would you really support father? Just saying, why did you get the attention you wanted? You need Jesus. That's offensive. We're gonna be talking with my friend Chanel here, um, who has been accused of killing her boyfriend, or ex-boyfriend, because now he is deceased. Um, so give a little backstory of who you are and, you know, what happened growing up. Like, what's your story? Ooh, there's so much to, like, unpack there. Uh, so I was born and raised in Orange County. Mm -hmm. And I've lived all over the place. <sighs> like, to give a backstory, I think that this will kind of help to better explain what we're going to talk about later in regards to relationships. When uh -huh. I was very young, I was... Molested. I was told that I was ugly, uh, and then I got put on Accutane for having acne. I got really fat, so then when I was in high school, it was the, I would date you. I wouldn't date you, but I would fuck you, because you're ugly, and my friends don't like you. And I was raped in high school, and I kept everything quiet, because I was blamed. Like, oh, well, nobody's going to believe you. Everybody hates you anyway. Mm -hmm. So all of that really weighed on me, and being heavy and everything else and people had said well if you were prettier I would like you more my friends would like you more I would date you because you'd be worthy of me and worthy of my attention and my affection and my love if you were more attractive yeah so I also grew up in a time where Baywatch and Singled Out and Playboy and Entertainment Tonight it was like playmates this playmates that mm -hmm. and uh, you want to be a playmate because being a playmate is like this badge of honor that you're like beautiful enough and these women all looked happy you're pretty enough to like be loved and get married and all this other shit yeah so i lost weight and wanted to try for playboy so i started modeling i mm -hmm. had other jobs of course after i graduated high school but that was like one of my main things was like i felt that me being smart wasn't enough me being nice wasn't enough me being a hard worker wasn't enough i had to change my package in order to be accepted by my peers by men by mm -hmm. society in general and it just kind of snowballed into me doing modeling and things like that. Mm -hmm. But that was a short enough gist as to like <laughs> my background that's kind of fucked up, but yeah. Yeah, oh my God, I'm so sorry to hear about all of that. And it's so crazy, like it, it definitely altered your perception of yourself and like your worthiness. And did you start like looking for outside sources of validation then? Oh, absolutely. Yeah. And <sighs> when I graduated high school, uh, my first boyfriend was 15 years older than me. And wow. um, he's not going to be too happy about me saying this because I'm cool with him at this point. But uh -huh. I definitely feel like he groomed me because he was talking to me when I was in high school. I made it a point to meet me and take my virginity as soon as he possibly could after I turned 18. And uh, he was obsessed with Carmen Electra. So then it was like, oh, well, you know, if you, if you lost weight. So over time and with trying to model, um, I wanted to lose weight to be more attractive to him. But yeah. I had a photo shoot that I was paying for from a photographer at one point. And... Um, he was shooting another model more than me. And she was like, long blonde hair, wafer thin, six feet tall, like absolutely flawless. And I go, why uh -huh. are you shooting her more than me? So he came up and grabbed me by the fat of my stomach and said, this is disgusting. I'm done shooting you. And I went on a diet the next day. So between oh the man God. that I was dating that I really wanted approval from and loyalty from, and I felt mm -hmm. like, oh, if I'm attractive enough, he'll stay loyal, he'll like me. I also wanted the approval of photographers and the modeling industry. I lost a bunch of weight. Yeah. But then it's like, well, yeah, you lose weight and, well, what the fuck happened to your boobs? So you should probably get those fixed, especially yeah. if you want to go be a playmate. So I um, <clears throat> paid for my first boobs, first set of boobs, and um, it was painful as fuck. And my mom was like, why are you doing this? You have big boobs. I'm like, no, 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 I lost weight. Now they look like sad ski slopes. I'm trying out for Playboy, not National Geographic. Like, that's gross, you know? And like, yeah. in retrospect, it's a horribly fucked up thing to say. Uh -huh. But when you feel like you have to look fucking perfect and have perky boobs, like natural boobs are ugly. So, yeah. which they're not by any means. Trust me, if I had nice, cute boobs, I would have fucking kept that shit. Yeah. But I went in and, and um, as my friends referred to them, clown tits put in because oh, they didn't oh, want scars. Yeah. So because I had so much extra space from losing that weight, they gave me uh, 700 cc implants. Oh my uh, gosh. Mm -hmm. Mine are only like 320. <laughs> they are huge. <laughs> um, so yeah. And I, I tried it for Playboy repeatedly because I wanted that validation and that mm -hmm. approval. And I wanted to, you know, be famous and be an actress and all this other shit. And probably like one of the worst examples I could give was when I was very young, probably about eight or nine. I found a movie called Star 80 on TNT late at night. You ever heard of it? No. Do you know who Dorothy Stratton is? No, but I also live under a rock, to be fair. 
Okay. So, <laughs> um, Dorothy Stratton was Playmate of the Year in 1980. Okay. She was murdered by her estranged husband. Okay. And she, um, she became an actress and she fell in love with Peter Bogdanovich, who was a very successful director at the time. But her, um, her soon-to-be ex-husband murdered her and sodomized and raped her dead corpse. And I saw this movie at like eight or nine and I was like, well, I'm going to go be a playmate. <laughs> I want to go be a playmate because I'm going to go be an actress, but I'm not going to let that happen to me. I'm going to go be a successful actress. I'm going to yeah. go be like Pamela Anderson and Carmen Electra uh-huh. and Jenny McCarthy. Yeah. Uh, yeah. That's not what happens for everybody. So I tried out for Playboy plenty mm-hmm. with that mindset of like, I'm going to make it like the rest of these girls, but I'm not going to end up dead with an yeah. abusive person. Uh-huh. So foreshadowing. <laughs> dun, <laughs> yeah. dun, 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 dun. <laughs> um, so after trying out for Playboy five times and mm-hmm. getting rejected, I was like, oh okay, well, let's move on. What's, what's next? And all while yeah. I had a normal job. Uh-huh. And this was like during a time too, because nowadays I feel like being curvy is like cool now, but not too curvy. It's like, uh, there's just so much give and take, but the, this was like how many years ago? Oh, really? Oh. You're going to date me now? Oh, sorry. Uh, but no, like, no, no, you know, really so I started <laughs> trying out for Playboy, um, when I was 20. So that would be 2006. Okay. Oh my. And that's when like size one was like oh, zero, honey. I size was like, zero. I okay. Lower than a size three. And I was still being called fat. Uh huh. I was like, Oh good Lord. So it was like, you had to like be a stick with tits. And I was like, I'm trying really hard to be a stick with tits. And, and no one had butts back then. then. Right. No, like we, nobody was getting butt injections and all that other <laughs> weird shit and fat transfer. It was just like, yeah, like you want to be super skinny with boobs and mm-hmm. you know, that was what you, you had to do. And I was trying really hard and just didn't get there. Uh huh. Oh my gosh. Well, good thing you didn't because now you're with the times. <laughs> yes. And now I can eat and it's okay to eat. And you don't yeah. have to sit there and fucking starve yourself and have an eating disorder anymore. Oh my gosh. I feel you there because <laughs> before butts were cool, I was in that state. Even when butts were cool, I'm like, yeah, but my stomach is not skinny enough. And this, the pressure society puts on you to just be like so skinny. And if you want to be in the modeling world and if you want to like go out and do things like, my, my friends who model, like, they can't get bigger than, like, a size one if they want to be, like, professional in, like, that industry and that world. And I'm like, there's, like, no inclusion in that. It's so ass backwards because I feel like me personally, I'm 35 now. I feel like I'm still being held to mm-hmm. those same standards that I was held to over a decade ago. You and don't yet, look a day over 20. Well, thank you. <laughs> the Botox is working. Um, but I, I really feel like my generation is still held to that standard where we're still expected to be a certain thing or we're not going to be accepted. Because, I mean, I look at the girls that are coming up now and I'm like, yo, y'all are sitting here eating ho-hos and ding-dongs for breakfast and I was over here like throwing up my fucking shake because I felt like I was eating too much when I was your age. So yeah. I, I kind of get frustrated when I hear people say like, oh, well, we need to be more inclusive. We need to, I'm like, trust me, be thankful. They are so much more inclusive than when I was trying to like legitimately model for agencies and things and be like, oh no, you're too fat. You're too short. Uh, mm-hmm. Your nose is too big. It's too uh, crooked, bumpy, whatever the fuck it was. They were always nitpicking every little thing. And now they're like, no, we want girls that look different. We want girls that look healthy and normal and average instead mm-hmm. of like walking blow up dolls or stick figures. Mm-hmm. So it's, it's much different for yeah. models now than when I was trying to model. Now I'm yeah. like, yeah, whatever. If I happen <laughs> to get a modeling gig, cool. Otherwise, like, whatever. Yeah. yeah. We, we have, have only fans. We're, we're still, still technically models, models, just like sex work models. <laughs> we're cyber sluts. <laughs> we're cyber sluts. <laughs> so you had a job this whole time while you were modeling, like yep. you were corporate. Yep. What, what were you doing? Like what was corporate life like? Uh, so the internet wasn't as utilized, I, I feel, as it is now. Like we didn't have Instagram yet. So yeah. I'm really dating myself now. We had MySpace and we started to have Facebook. <laughs> and with that, um, I worked in the steel industry doing data entry. I worked in hospitals doing data entry and filing. And I was administrative assistant to people. Mm-hmm. Um, I worked through a temp agency and I did periodically have like long-term positions like with the steel company and stuff doing data entry. But no matter what job I had, somebody was always looking you up on the internet. You know, mm-hmm. trying to Google you, trying to add you on Facebook, whatever they could, MySpace. Mm-hmm. And I, of course, would post modeling photos from when I was, like, working bike rallies or working gay pride festivals and things like that for shirt uh-huh. companies or alcohol companies, whatever I could to make extra money because minimum wage doesn't quite pay the bills. No. And so I was, like, taking on extra jobs. Sometimes I'd have two or three jobs at the same time to pay bills. Mm-hmm. And it's 
not so cool when bosses find your modeling pictures and then decide to bring it up at work. But you can't really do anything about it because, you know, it was kind of like a new thing with the internet and people can't really be like, oh, well, he looked me up on the internet on his spare time. Like, that's kind of creepy. Uh Uh-huh. And they're like, oh, well, you know, it's no big deal. I mean, everybody looks stuff up on the internet. I'm like, I'm pretty sure that nowadays people would be like, that's a little bit of an invasion of privacy, dude. Like, don't bring up a personal life in the fucking office. Yeah. Yeah. And if I was being paid enough, I wouldn't have to go, you know, shake my tits on a bar and sell shots. (laughs) Like, come on. How do you feel as a woman being in, like, the working environment that you were in? Um, I felt like I was severely overworked and underpaid in some positions, always being sexually harassed, sometimes even assaulted. Uh, One job in particular, I'm not going to completely out this dipshit. (laughs) <laughs> but I worked for a solar company for a couple of years mm-hmm. and I was hired to be the administrative assistant and accounts receivable. But this guy figured out I wasn't a fucking idiot and it was just me and him and his business partner lived up north in Santa Barbara. So since his business partner wasn't always around, he'd be like, oh, well, I just need you to handle a few extra things. And he'd go golfing. Mm-hmm. Well, it turned into me being the office and warehouse manager and wrapping pallets and reconfiguring solar lights to the point where my fingers were bleeding and I wasn't being paid overtime because they couldn't afford to do that. So after about two years, I was like, listen, dude, between me and you, I'm not making enough. Like, I I need a raise. I'm renting a room from my ex-boyfriend because it's all I can afford because I'm not being paid enough. Yeah. And he was like, you got fake tits. Go put them to use on the weekends and go be a stripper if you need extra money. It's not my fucking problem. Mm Mm-hmm. Foreshadowing. So (laughs) I am... I ended up telling his business partner when he came into town the next week and his business partner said, you need to go on lunch right now. You're being horribly unprofessional. I to mean, you? Yes. I'm like, I'm being unprofessional. They're like, we are so close to firing you right now. I can't believe that you just came in here and did this. And I'm like, are you, are you fucking kidding me? To expose your old boss? Yeah. The, to his business partner about how unprofessional he was and how perverted he was. And I was like, what the fuck? So they gave me a 50 cent raise. But that is just the icing on the cake. I mean, this guy would chase yeah. me around the office with spiders because he knew I didn't like them. He had me come into his office because he was convinced that there was a snake under his table or under his desk, and it was actually a lizard. And when I bent under the desk to get it, like, of course, my butt's in the air, I'm on all fours. He didn't touch me, but he put his foot in front of me and stepped on the lizard. And I was like, why would you come in here and try to have me get it if you're just going to try to kill it? So then he starts fighting with me over the lizard as I'm trying to, like, rescue the lizard. And he put his arm around my waist and was, like, trying to pull on me. So I was, like, fighting him off of me. Yeah. Rescued this tiny-ass little fucking, you know, garden lizard and threw him outside. Uh Uh-huh. But these are just a couple of examples from one dude. Yeah. He was a freaking douche. I'm (laughs) guessing the men didn't have nearly the same experience. No, of course not. And did any of the men take you seriously in the office where they were like, this is obviously fucked up? Oh, no. It was me. I was the one in the office. Only person? Yes. Oh. Which is why when I tried to discuss all of this with an attorney, they said, well, you didn't record the conversation, which wouldn't matter because that's not legal in the state of California. It's, it would be inadmissible. You wouldn't be oh. able to use it. You can't record people without their knowledge or permission. Really? So I wouldn't be able to use it in court anyway. Uh Uh-huh. I had no witnesses. Well, of course, because I'm the only employee. It's his word against mine. It was really hard to find jobs around, God, what time period? It was like 2010 to 2012. Yeah, because of the recession. Yeah, so they were just like, yeah, you're basically just going to be out of a job at this point. Mm Mm-hmm. So I just kept putting up with it. Yeah. Yeah. When did you transition from, like, working a normal, or, you know, a normal, yeah, that's more of a normal job to starting, like, YouTube and all of your other fun stuff. Was that when you met your ex-boyfriend, Rich, or was that? So I was kind of dabbling with Instagram and YouTube before I met him. Mm -hmm. And um, I transitioned my modeling into doing just silly little things on Instagram and taking pictures of my food because that's what we were all doing at that point. (laughs) But I wasn't taking it seriously. Yeah. And while I was working for the creepy guy, Mm -hmm. I ended up meeting this Australian guy at random. It, really long story short, we dated for about a year going back and forth after visiting him and meeting his family. I came home. He's like, I love you. I want to marry you. Come live here with me. And I was just like, oh my God, it's, you know, my crocodile Dundee. He's my knight in shining <laughs> armor. Like, okay, totally. So mm-hmm. I sold everything that I had. And like, I'm sorry, but if somebody gives you the opportunity to like be loved and go live in another country with them and you're going to build a life together over yeah. working with some asshole, uh-huh. I'm going to fucking take that opportunity. Sorry. Yeah. So we were like planning on living happily ever after. That didn't work out because he was caught cheating and doing drugs and I'm not about that shit. So I came home. Uh, yeah. And shortly after I met Rich. 
And mm-hmm. when I met Rich was when he started saying, you need to take this more seriously. You're just posting on here for fun. You need to take it more seriously. Uh-huh. So that is where the YouTube started to come into play and posting more professional modeling photos and things like that on my Instagram. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So I think it's a little funny. I mean, I don't know if funny is the right word, but you did mention that you didn't want to come off as like bitter during this episode. And I do think that if a man were trying to clear his name or talk about his experiences or talk about his trauma, he wouldn't be painted like they were some bitter bitch. So I just really wanted to mention this before we dive in because it's like, I mean, it's not bitter for you to want to share your story and to share your experiences and to share your trauma and, um, I know that you wanted to be clear about some things with Rich as well. Yeah, so what I'm about to divulge, I've never talked about publicly. People that are close to me and that were actually close to us know uh, aspects of our relationship that nobody else knows. And I had always said, oh, I'm not going to talk about it. Now I'm to the point where like, I just want to tell my truth because I'm tired of the lies that have been said about me. But with that being said, I want to be clear. Rich was a very good person when he wanted to be and he was very loving and affectionate when he wanted to be but he could be extremely unusually cruel and heartless when it benefited him Mm -hmm. so that's where I'm like there's definitely a um a dichotomy to him and there's definitely a catch-22 to me telling my truth yeah definitely well I'm really proud of you for having the strength to do this thanks (laughs) Thanks. So how did you meet him? Like, how did the relationship start? So I met him at the LA Fit Expo in January of 2013. Mm -hmm. I was actually like standing in line waiting to take a picture with Tito Ortiz to get an autograph for my uh, brother-in-law at the time. And I looked over and I'm like, what is this crowd for? And I like peek through the crowd and I just see this like monster of a man. And I always say that he was like a unicorn. He's this thing that you've always heard about, but never personally seen. He's like bigger than Arnold. He was fucking ginormous and so hot and um, <laughs> I walked over to him after I took my picture and got my little autograph thing for my brother-in-law uh-huh. and he said I saw you yesterday I was hoping that you'd come over I'm like you saw me yesterday you remember that he goes yeah I've been wanting to talk to you I'm like, you want to talk to me uh-huh. I was just like oh my god and so I, did, I was so nervous I didn't know what to say and I was like well, I don't know whose boobs are bigger mine or yours because he had a massive <laughs> chest and he just kind of chuckled and I'm like wow that was so fucking awkward and I was like okay well let's take a picture it was it was great meeting you. Bye. And I went over to one of the other guys and I was like, hey, what's that guy's name? And I cyber stalked him a little bit, which is, I guess, kind of embarrassing. But I hit him up and I was like, hey, it was really nice meeting you. Hopefully our paths will cross again someday. And he's like, we don't live that far apart. Like, you want to go eat lunch next week? And I was like, okay. Uh huh. And so um, our first date was like something stupid, like 14 hours. Our second date was like a day or two later. And that was another like 16 hours. But yeah. it was like he would just talk the whole time. We weren't having sex. We weren't even making out. We were just sitting there talking, getting to know each other. And it was like so amazing. I felt so connected to somebody later on. Come to find out it's gaslighting. You call that gaslighting ladies. Uh, (laughs) Man is sitting there telling you like everything that you want to hear. And like, you guys have so much in common and everything is just so perfectly aligned, especially when it's like very soon into meeting you. Yes. And, uh, after our fourth date, he was like, are you seeing anybody else? And I said, well, actually, yeah. Like I went on a date with somebody a couple of nights ago and He's nice. He's my age. Like, Mm -hmm. is there a problem? And he's like, well, I just want to date you. I don't don't want to be some guy. I want to be the only one that you're dating. And I was like, oh, okay. Well, I didn't really know what your intentions were. Or, you know, we've only gone on four dates and you want to do them like back to back to back. Yeah. Which was to me like kind of overwhelming and strange, but Uh I wasn't, I'm just not used to that. And I figured, oh, maybe it's because he's older than me because he was 16 years older than me. Okay. And, um, he definitely seemed more interested in something long-term with me than the other guy. So I was like, well, yeah, of course. Why wouldn't I want to date somebody who wants something more serious as opposed to a guy who's not sure of what he wants? Yeah. So I was working as a bartender at the time. When I came back from Australia, Mm -hmm. I had nothing. I had $250 to my name. I put gas in my car, turned my cell phone back on, and I found a job within two days. And Mm -hmm. I was working as a bikini bartender. Not the classiest fucking shit, but bro, like... I heard you can make a lot of money doing that shit. I was paying my fucking bills. I was saving. I was good. And I was um, studying to get my personal training certification. So when I met Rich, he knew all about that. He knew that I was also still renting a room from my ex-boyfriend, because that's Uh what I could afford. Yeah. And uh, he goes, well, why don't you work for me? He goes, Uh I have this clothing line, but I'm also a sponsored athlete with this company. And I need somebody that, you know, can just, like, revamp this and help me, like, work through it and send out orders. And I was like... 
oh, well, okay, but I still have my, my job, you know, and it's kind of far away and that would take up a lot of my time. And he goes, well, I would pay you. And yeah. I was like, oh, well, okay. He goes, and I don't want you to live with your ex-boyfriend. Like, that's kind of weird. Uh-huh. <laughs> and I was like, well, yeah, I totally understand that. That's, that's yeah. fine. But I can't afford my own place yet. So if I start making enough money, then yeah, I'll, I'll move out and everything. I'll get that sorted out. I totally felt like that was a reasonable request. And he goes, no, I want you to move in with me. How um, long into the relationship was this? <laughs> it was like, like a month and a half. A month? Oh, okay. <laughs> That's again, like very, a qu- very quick turnaround. Gaslighting, again. We're yeah. understanding that in retrospect as an adult. Uh-huh. Um, <laughs> so I was just like really naive. And I'd been bruised and broken so much and used and abused really emotionally that I was just like, okay, yeah, absolutely. Like you actually want me and you want me around? Ugh, absolutely. I, I totally want to jump into this with you because... This is so intense and so amazing. Like, you fucking sit there, grow up on Disney shit, where, like, you know, the little mermaid gives up her entire <laughs> life after, like, two days of knowing this asshole. And is like, oh, my God, yeah, we're going to be together forever. So yeah. you kind of have that mentality after you've been pushed down enough to think, like, well, if this person wants me, like, yeah, and I want you just as much. Uh-huh. Absolutely. So I go to move in with him. And I think it was, like, the week before I moved in with him. He goes, I have to tell you something. I'm like oh, fuck, this is never good. Oh, uh-huh. okay, what's up? He had had me quit my job abruptly, move out from my exes, and I had like just finished moving in my shit. And he goes, so I didn't really know where this was going, but my ex-wife needs to move in with us. And I was like, <laughs> what? You just had me move out from my ex-boyfriend's house because you thought that that was fucking weird. And I haven't slept with that guy in like four years, but this is, I'm supposed to accept this. Okay. Yeah. So what's, what's the deal, bro? And he was like, well, you know, she has a dog and I'm like, okay, he had two pit bulls and he goes, well, those were our dogs together. And she has the third pit bull and her new lease person, like, um, the house that she was renting on their lease, they didn't want her to have a dog. Mm -hmm. So I told her that she could, you know, just stay on her wing of the house until she finds something else. Mm -hmm. And I was like, okay, is this something I have to worry about? Are you guys like platonic? He goes, oh yeah, we've been divorced for like nearly a decade. So. Uh Uh-huh. We're just like totally cool. And I was like, all right, whatever. So I met her like when she moved in the following <laughs> week and we took to each other like a duck in water. Like I was like, cool, man. I really fucking dig her. I, yeah. Like she was like super rad and very supportive of us being together. And uh-huh. like she was really nice. Yeah. But it's, it's just a weird cycle of, of shit that he would do. He, um, and I didn't realize it until like I started going through therapy after he passed that he had this thing where he would like sort of indoctrinate you into needing him or feeling like you needed him and I feel like she's a very strong independent woman but I feel like to a degree she she needs to be needed or likes being needed and he like could not fucking figure out how to turn his water back on when it got shut off okay so he was like in his 40s Okay, so he, she didn't... Okay, so, like, her not needing him was, like, fucking with his brain to then make... Because, like, he could easily prey on you because, if anything, you did need him at that point because you didn't have the job. You were, like, barely affording your life. And he came up... Like, he came in as, like, a steed. What is what is this saying? Like a knight in shining armor. Knight, knight in shining armor to be able to, like, pick you up and save you. So it's, like, you would be very dependent and reliant on and him. And then, of course, throw it in your face later. And he did the same thing to her. Yeah. So like she moved in and, um, she was, you know, doing, um, she was a massage therapist. So she was doing massages and things like that. And then he goes, well, Chanel, Chanel isn't smart enough to like figure this out on her own with the clothing line. I'd never ran a clothing line before. So she was helping me like sort out the tax paperwork from the year prior because he didn't even do his taxes. Oh, okay. So her and I were like collaborating to try to sort that shit out. Yeah. And we connected on a few different things and design collaborations and all that other stuff came up with different ideas together. I was taking all the photos for everything. I was filming his YouTube videos, um, going to downtown LA and picking stuff up Mm -hmm. and she was, her and I were both responding to, um, people's orders and their emails. And sometimes people thought that they were from him because we had to sit there and he was away. So we had to fucking respond for him. Uh huh. So he just was a very good showman. Yeah. And at one point while I was, I have to tell this about the computer and the side story when I was Uh filming his, videos for YouTube. I had to edit them and he ran out of space on his laptop. And he goes, well, then just delete some of my old videos. Mm-hmm. And I was like, okay. He had porn from fucking his ex-girlfriend on his computer and made me delete it because he didn't know how. So wow. his ex-wife came home to me sitting at his computer crying uncontrollably. And she was like, what the, f- you know how to delete videos, Rich. Why the fuck are you making her do that? No, she needs to delete it. It was like he needed me to watch it to show me, like, 
put me beneath somebody else. And like, then he would tell me like, you know, if you see, you've seen how, how we have sex, like you need to have sex with me like that. Oh my God. I have never had someone, uh, no, I've, I've had concerns about my head, but I've never, <laughs> other than that, I've never had someone like compare a sexual experience as to like another girl that they had. That's so t like I think that might break me because <laughs> I already know I'm not very good at giving head but like the other stuff like no that would break me there was a lot of things that were kind of strange in regards to that like I didn't sleep with him for the first like two or three weeks that we were dating and he got really mad at me at one point about it wow and he's like you just don't find me attractive I'm like no I find you very attractive I'm just I take my time with things to make sure you have good intentions and yeah. you actually want this to go somewhere and I said side note you know like you were wearing gray sweatpants with no underwear and Bro, I have compact parking. That is an <laughs> RV. Like, so just for the record, it is not true what they say about steroids. Steroids do not make your dick smaller. They make your balls smaller. So. Oh, interesting. Because yes. I'm like, at the University of Arizona, where I went to college, <laughs> um, a lot of guys actually took steroids, specifically in one fraternity, Pike. <laughs> Can I even call them out like this? I don't know, but I remember you talking about it on another podcast. <laughs> I'm like, no, it doesn't make their dick smaller. It makes the balls smaller. And a lot of them had small dicks, so this is so interesting that they yeah, were just they were born just, with like, it and happened flux. to do steroids. Now you got small balls and you naturally got a small dick, and you <laughs> cannot blame that on the steroids. Oh um, my gosh, how interesting. Yeah. So he was on steroids. Yeah, lots of them. Since he was like 17 or 18. Wow, um, okay. So it's not natural to get that big, like that easy. No. Oh, and it's, it's not easy either. When guys take steroids and they're big, they actually do have to put in a lot of work and effort and a lot, they have uh -huh. to eat a lot of food, take a lot of shit. So it's not just like you pump yourself full of this fucking joy juice and you're fucking huge. Like you have to yeah. put in effort. Yeah. Um, sorry, I realize I'm kind of going all over the place with this, but I mean, oh, you're fine. Is, I did a lot of stuff for him and I had to go through a lot of stuff to try to fit what he needed in his life. Yeah. I had to give up my friends, my family. I was told that I wasn't allowed to talk to my mother because she had more control over me than he did. And nobody should have wow. more control over you than me, Chanel, because you're going to spend the rest of your life with me, not her. Yeah. So, okay. So I was very isolated. I had him and his ex-wife. Mm -hmm. Didn't have any friends. And I was working 14 to 16 hour days. So when the fuck would I have time for that anyway? Yeah. He and would control my food, how I dressed, who I talked to, how long I was gone, where I went, who I went with, like all of that. Mm-hmm. Oh, an allowance. He stopped paying me as soon as I moved in. No, 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 no. Well, now that you're living with me, I'm taking care of everything. So I'm just going to give you an allowance for your car payment, you know, your phone bill, that kind of thing. If yeah. you want anything else, all you have to do is ask. But uh -huh. nine times out of 10, the answer was no. Really? Yeah, I don't like the way that that looks on you. You can't have that. Well, why would you need that? You don't need that. I'll tell you what you need. I'm like, so okay. no freedom. Wow. And, like, did the ex-wife pick up on any of the stuff? Did she stand up for you? Like, what was... Periodically, she did. Especially when he would, like, yell and scream at me for, like, stupid shit, like, cooking his eggs wrong or whatever. She'd be like, hey, oh, my like, God. Turn the fuck out. Or the fact that I didn't want the dogs sleeping in the bed with us because I was, like, kind of scared of dogs when I first started okay. dating him. And I wasn't quite used to that yet. So there was, like, some, some weird shit. There was uh -huh. just, like, weird shit all around. There's yeah. probably something I'm forgetting or I'm leaving out. And I'm certainly not trying to make him out to be a bad person. Because people are like, God, if he was like so like off, why did you stay? Well, because that's not who he presented when I started dating him. Uh -huh. He was like very affectionate and very nice and wanted to cuddle all the time and was so close and so nice and so affectionate and so complimentary. Mm -hmm. And he said, I love you. And I'm like, oh my God, he loves Someone me? Someone loves me? Do you realize how long it takes for me to get somebody to fucking say that? Like, sometimes they never say it. So yeah. I was like, wow, like, this is really, like, the real deal. And, you know, relationships are hard work. So I just need to understand, like, I just, I'm not working hard enough. Like, I need to work harder. And he's giving me, like, the blueprint. He's showing me, like, you have to fuck me this way in order for me to want to be with you. You have to look this way in order for me to continue to be attracted to you. You have to oh go do gosh. these surgeries that I want because the last girl did them for me. And if you don't do them, then you don't love me enough, Chanel. Yeah. So it's things like that that I was like, okay, so if I do all these things and he won't cheat on me, and I'll have the person I want that I love for the rest of my life as long as I do as I'm told. Uh-huh. So I did, and I fucked myself up. <laughs> yeah. Oh my gosh, what surgeries did you get because of him, if you don't mind me asking? No, I don't fucking give a shit. Most people don't know, so I'm about to drop some bombs. Bombs. Um, so this was before injections were a thing. Uh-huh. He had convinced me that every girl he'd ever been with had had illegal silicone injections. Oh, and I was like, I don't want to do that. Like, I worked my ass off, literally worked my ass off to have a small ass because I wanted to be playmate, like, uh -huh. stick with tits. That's what I needed was yeah. to be super fucking skinny with boobs. 
I was like, I didn't work my butt off and diet and have a fucking eating disorder so I could have fat ass. I did it so that I'd be fucking skinny. Uh huh. And oh, the silicone injections in your lips or your butt? Both. Oh. So um, he finally convinced me after saying, you know, all the other girls have done it for me, and if you don't do it, then you don't love me, Chanel. You know, and I like women that look like this. Uh huh. And I was like, uh, okay. He was like, well, I mean, I really do like women that look like Anna Nicole Smith, but my fans and followers, they they won't like that. So you have to lose more weight, but if you get butt injections, then you'll still have curves. Wow. So this, um, this woman came to the house and did not numb me at all and was like, okay, I need you to drop trowel. I'm going to mark your butt with a Sharpie. So she marked my ass with a Sharpie. She mm -hmm. laid down a tarp and a puddle pad and was like... A puddle pad? Mm -hmm. Is that for your like blood? In case you bleed or in case there's any leakage or whatever. Okay. So you're like laying down on your stomach. She took a... This is so fucked up to admit... She took like a, a bottle of like Pedialyte, uh -huh. Pedialyte jar, and dumped it into Tupperware. Then she took what I was told was a sterile needle, one of those really big ones, uh -huh. and just goes, okay, you ready? After she filled it with a fucking silicone, as I was told that it was. Yeah. And I go, okay, I'm ready. And I was like, can I hold your hand? And I was like trying to hold Rich's hand. And he's like, yeah, I guess. Like, okay, I'm doing this because you said I need to do this for you to be attracted to me, but okay. Yeah. So jab and she fucking just you can feel it feel it like filling up parts of your ass uh-huh and then she um would take super glue and put super glue over the spot and then puts um like a makeup removing pad over it and so definitely illegal all, um, all of that yeah, like in your fucking bedroom yeah, yeah nothing it's not a <laughs> sterile fucking environment no and did you have any complications I'm like, where's wood? Knock on wood, no. <laughs> like, as far as I know, everything is okay. Um, uh -huh. But he had me do that like three times. Once at the house, twice at different hotels. Oh my God. And um, I didn't want to do it. And people are like, I've told other guys, oh yeah, you didn't want a bigger butt. No, I don't. I still don't want a fucking big butt. But mm -hmm. I had to like do this to make sure that he would remain attracted to me, like he yeah. said, so he wouldn't stray and wouldn't cheat. So like, did you think you were happy at the time or did you know deep down that like something wasn't right? I knew deep down something wasn't right. And for all this horrible stuff that I'm sharing that's like really fucked up, the reason why I stayed was because he would wake up every morning and kiss me on the forehead and tell me that he loved me. Yeah. He would cuddle with me all the time. He would always want to hold me somehow, holding my hand, touching my waist, hugging me, kissing me, telling me he loved me. It was like, I'm a words of affirmation person. Same. I but, need yeah. to know, like, I'm good enough and that you're proud of me. And it was like, he knew that. So that was the one thing he never would say was that he was proud of me. He would say he loved me all the time, say that I was sexy and beautiful, uh -huh. but would never tell me that he loved me. Uh -huh. But it was also like the, well, you're sexy and beautiful, but you should get your lips injected because it will distract from your witch's nose. I was like, oh, oh okay. And a nose job is too expensive. It's cheaper for me to have your lips injected. And I was like, okay. Yeah. And you can't wear shorts because you have too much cellulite. You're not lean enough. So I was only allowed to wear shorts, I think, like, two or three times in the time we were together. Oh, my gosh. And we would fight about it, like, hardcore, like, yelling, screaming, like, why can't I wear shorts? Because it's embarrassing. I'm like, oh, you make us look bad. And stop sharing your I used to be fat photos online. You shouldn't be the before and after girl. You should always just want to be the hot girl. Nobody wants to follow the before and after girl. That makes me look bad. It makes us look bad. And I was like, does he not show his, like, before, or did he not show? Because, you know. Not RIP. really. His before photos? No. No, because he was always roided out and like big and he worked his ass off and he was Mr. California and he was, you know, all tattooed and Do huge. those male pageant things or, you know, like male bodybuilding competition, <laughs> do they not drug test? No. Oh, interesting. No. Oh my God, no. It, it, fucking steroids and drugs run rampant in the bodybuilding community. It's a yeah. fucking joke. And I heard the bodybuilding com community can be a little bit of a toxic environment um, because I was talking to Thompson and Thompson was saying that like people in the bodybuilding industry for some reason have such a diehard fan base that it's like they could literally kill a person and their fans would be like, nah, this guy, he's great. Like, is that something that you would agree with in the bodybuilding industry? Um, with like the fan base to a degree. Yeah. Rich, Rich actually said some gnarly stuff, uh, to one of his other ex-girlfriends and she recorded it and then she released it or sold it or whatever. Uh -huh. And we kind of had to do damage control. It was him yelling at her for supposedly cheating on him with an African American or, or black guy. And, uh, he was dropping, you know, the end bomb. Uh -huh. And 
I was like, what the fuck? I mean, you got to do damage control, dude. You have to fucking do damage control. This is ridiculous. I, when the when the fuck did you say this? What like he's like this? I don't know if it was who I think it is. It was like ten. I'm like, what do you mean if it is who you think it is? How many people have you said this to? Yeah. But it, apparently it was like something from like a decade before that. And I was like, what the hell? So she just like held on to it all this time. Yeah. And then like sold it or released it or whatever the hell she did. Uh huh. And he ended up going down and doing an interview with somebody else in the bodybuilding community and brought one of the athletes from our supplement company with us. And uh, who happened, of course, to have been black. And he was like asking, well, how do you feel about the fact that Rich said this, this, and this? And he's like, well, you know, we all say shit. We don't mean when we're fucking pissed. And I'm just like, oh, my God. Like, there's just, there's some things that, you know, he ended up, not that it got swept under the rug, but Mm -hmm. I think for the most part, people were like, okay, whatever. I think people also weren't so surprised that it came out of his mouth because he was always saying crazy shit. Yeah. But I think that a lot of people do get away in the fitness community they get away with doing some heinous fucked up shit yeah when did you like so you you broke up with him once and then there was and then you got back together so what happened before like the first breakup and then the process of getting back together with him i left him a total of 10 times in oh of course <laughs> in a course of two and a half years yeah because um because of his abuse and his drug use mm-hmm. and i never speak publicly about his drug use because I didn't specifically see him taking shit all the time, but I knew that he was doing things. He had admitted to me at one point, like, I have a problem. And I don't quite remember exactly how it was worded. Yeah. But he did confess to me at one point, like, I have a problem. I feel like I'm a better boyfriend to you when I'm fucked up. And I'm like, no, that's kind of the problem. And you just said when you're fucked up, you feel like you're a better boyfriend. That is fucked up. Yeah. And pushed me to do drugs with him. And I was like, little miss, drug free is the way to be. And Uh it was just, um, it was really toxic and scary. Yeah. But, yeah, I, um, I put up with that for two and a half years, and then I left. Mm-hmm. And when I left him, I said, you need to find someone who will do drugs with you and will follow your every command and all this other shit. And he's like, but I fucking love you. And I was like, you're yelling at me even when you say I love you now. Like, it's not healthy. You're not happy. Like, please, just let it go. Uh-huh. So I left shortly after he met this um, other woman who was from Iceland, like really hot blonde girl, like bodybuilder chick, a little bit younger than me. And they ended up getting married shortly after. Mm -hmm. And over the course of 396 days, I think it was, we didn't speak. Mm -hmm. He married her and they got separated and he filed for annulment. And then he started talking to me again because he needed somebody to film him. And he was like, I'm clean and sober. I swear I am. I had no idea what I was putting you through until I was with somebody else who was doing shit with me. And I'm so sorry. And this is allegedly, I don't want to make this girl look bad, Um, I don't know exactly their full story, but I know what he told me. But Mm -hmm. I also know what he was like. So I was like, okay, was it really that she was the one that wanted to do math or was it you? Wow. Wow. Yeah. And so I know from what he said, so this is allegedly, again, not trying to make this girl look bad. Yeah. They allegedly were doing math together because she pushed him into doing math with him, which Mm -hmm. I'm like, how the fuck could anybody push you to do anything, sir? You were definitely (laughs) the one that amplifies the pushing of doing things. He's like the definition of like alpha angry man. He said they were doing Adderall together Uh and Oxy and um, GHB. And I'm like, uh, there's a whole lot of fucking cocktail shit, bro. Like, what the fuck? What did you do when you guys were broken up, though? Because you literally had to rely on him for so much shit. Like, then you had to be independent, right? Yeah. I uh, went back to bikini bartending temporarily because I was like, I don't know what the fuck to do. And I just need some money to, like, get by. I was living with my aunt and uncle. And one of my girlfriends was like, hey, I'm a blackjack dealer in Vegas. And I've got an apartment. I'll help you get a job. I was uh-huh. like, really? And she's like, yeah, what the fuck do you have to lose? I'm like, cool. Grabbed my pillow, hopped in her car, fucking took off to Vegas, got hired to be a blackjack dealer. Uh huh. So I was a blackjack dealer for a while and my hours got cut and I was like, fuck, I got to pay my rent because I moved out from her spot. I was renting a room from another girl that I knew and that girl was like, well, I'm a dancer. I can probably help you get hired as a dancer. I'm like, oh no, I don't, I don't want to do that. And like, <laughs> what if Rich finds out? Like, even though yeah. I wasn't with him, I still felt like, oh my God, I have to follow his rules and I have to not do things that are going to, he's going to disapprove of if he finds out. And she's like, girl, fuck that guy. He went off and married somebody else. What the fuck do you care? Like, go make money. You have to take care of yourself. Yeah. So I started dancing. So I was dealing blackjack and stripping. And um, there is, like, some gnarly shit that goes on with dancing. And since I don't drink or do drugs, like, having to do that shit sober is, like, Uh, I'm not good at that. Like, I am not. 
I'm not good at schmoozing people and it's like, yeah, baby, are you getting wet? No, bitch, I'm drier than the fucking Sahara. Give me my 20 bucks. Like, ugh. so I just, I made okay money. I made good enough money to where yeah. I took myself to New Orleans with my sister for Halloween. I took myself to Australia for Valentine's Day by myself. Mm-hmm. I went to the Keys with my parents to celebrate my birthday. Like I did all this shit when I wasn't with him and I was happy. I was a little stressed because I wasn't like doing amazing, Yeah. but I was like, yo, I'm taking care of myself. I'm okay. And I'm not around chaos and drugs and all of this bullshit. Uh huh. And um, about oh god, like a month after I got back from the Keys, it was like, hey, um, one of our friends from the gym, hey, Rich doesn't have your new number, and he's been trying to text your old number. Can you get in touch with him because he needs somebody to film him? Like he kicked her out because of all of this drama. And I was like, oh shit, okay. So I talked to him on the phone, and he's like, I legit, I will pay you. I just need somebody to film me. I'm comfortable with you filming me. Like, is that cool? Okay, cool. Like, like filming his workouts, workouts or filming his YouTube videos, taking pictures workout. for his products, all that shit. Okay, because we're like on the OnlyFans That's space, it. so people are like filming. <laughs> yeah, no, not like that. Um, yeah. So definitely different. And that's how we started talking again and he had kind of inched it the whole like I, you know I'm really sorry about everything and that was I think one of the only few times he ever apologized for anything was he said that he was sorry that he put me through what he put me through pushed me to do things I didn't want to do and he's like now that I've been with somebody like that I know how dangerous it can be and how frustrating it can be and I will never do that to you ever again mm-hmm. and I was like okay so he's like well do you want to try to work things out yeah well why not this was like probably three or four weeks after me working for him that that came about because I yeah. was very much trying to stay in a professional capacity. And, and did he pay you? Get paid. He did. Okay. He paid me like 22 bucks an hour and I just had to log my hours, which was decent money for what I was doing because yeah. I'm self-taught. I'm not like some amazing videographer that knows what the fuck I'm doing. Yeah. I'm just self-taught. Uh-huh. So it was good enough for his little basic YouTube stuff and some commercial stuff that he wanted to use, but that was that. Mm-hmm. And then another, I don't know, a couple weeks goes by and he goes, well... I mean, I know that we just kind of like got back together, but I have to um, move to Florida for the business because that's where his supplement company ended up being. Okay. And I was like, okay, cool. So what does that mean for us? And he's like, well, I mean, I want you to go with me, but do you want to go? And I was like, well, yeah, I mean, like we're in a much better place. You're clean. You're sober. You're happy. You're not even fucking taking steroids at this point. Oh, yeah. But it bothered him because he had to take Cialis in order to have sex because everything was just shut down from him not having testosterone in his system he had really? taken so much shit that over time i think he just naturally depleted whatever the fuck was left in there yeah and then we moved to florida and another month goes by and i'm still getting paid and logging my fucking hours all this mm-hmm. other shit but at about a month mark he was like well i don't want you to get paid by the company anymore and i was like what and he goes well now i feel like you're double dipping and i was like what do you mean and he goes well i'm paying for everything i'm like right but i have no problem like giving you my share from my money that i'm making he goes but it's my company why would i pay you from my company what? But you had no problem doing that when I lived somewhere else before. That doesn't make any sense. He goes, well, you can either stop getting paid by the company and be with me and we can be together forever or you can find your own way back to California. Mm-hmm. And I was like, what? He goes, but I love you. You know, I don't want to lose you. Like, I'm doing this because I want to take care of you. And I just, I don't want you to save up a bunch of money and run away ever again like you did before. And I was like, whoa, okay, there. thank you for fucking spilling the beans and telling the truth. Yeah. And I was like, honey, I'm never going to leave you ever again. Like, we're in a good place. You're happy. You're clean. You're sober. Everything's fine. Uh-huh. That's, that's, I totally get it. And his ex-wife was like, don't you dare. Don't you dare stop getting paid by the company because it's going to fuck you at some point. And I was yeah. like, no. I'm like, I really want him to know that I love him and I'm, I'm with him. I said, I really appreciate your advice, but I'm in a, between a rock and a hard spot. I mean, can you talk yeah. to him? So she was kind enough to try to talk some sense to him. But he was like, no, absolutely not. Either she stops getting paid by the company or she fucking is out on her own. Did ass. the ex-wife still live with you guys? No, she had her own apartment okay. at that point. <laughs> so, and when we wow. all lived together, it was actually really cool and cohesive because her and I would work out together. She would help me stick to my diet and all this other stuff. And she very much tried to save me from a few situations with him where he was getting abusive. And she like stood, like stood, stepped in and was like, hey, knock it off. Like, what the mm-hmm. fuck are you doing? Like, she's normal. She's not doing anything wrong. And you're like flying off the handle on stupid shit. Yeah. And... Part of that, I'm sure, was attributed to the drugs he was taking and how they were making him feel. Yeah. So um, when she stepped in to try to help me to keep getting paid, she's like, I said all I can say. And she's like, he is like hellbent on this. So you have to decide whether or not this is the right choice for you. Uh huh. And I knew what that meant, that I would go back to getting an allowance of $700 a month to pay my... Yeah, $700 a month to work 14 to 16 hour days, seven days a week. Wow. Because he was paying rent and buying food. Uh huh. 
because everything else I wanted, I had to ask for. I wasn't getting, I don't want name brand shit anyway, but I wasn't like asking for name brand shit or whatever. Yeah. Like he was paying rent and buying me food. And then he would take me to places with him for work. Uh huh. So it was just, it was kind of insane. Yeah. But that's where I went back to. I knew what that, that, what that meant. But I was also being told, I love you and I'm going to marry you. I, I just, uh-huh. I really want us to be in a good place. I'm like, okay, I totally understand respect that. He goes, I don't ever want to lose you ever again. Okay, great. I'm, honey, I'm not going anywhere. I'm right here with you. Mm-hmm. And, um, months goes by and I start realizing like he's acting funny. And I knew that he was going to a wellness clinic for testosterone replacement therapy. Okay. And, um, HGH, human growth hormone. Mm -hmm. I don't remember the name of the clinic, but he was going to some clinic out there, um, for all of that stuff. So he was getting like doctor prescribed shit, but I realized he was acting funny. And I'm like, I don't think that's all he's doing. Yeah. And I don't know what the fuck else it could be, but uh, this doesn't seem right. Mm -hmm. So I tried bringing it up to him got my ass chewed out and I was just like, okay, well, I guess that I'm wrong. Sorry. And I ended up like being like, okay, I kind of have to tread lightly around this one. But over time, the more expos that we went to, the more fucked up I realized he was. And I was like, he is somehow back on shit, but I don't know where it's at. I don't know where he's getting it. I, I had no fucking clue. Yeah. And his, I had told his ex-wife, I think something is wrong. And she like came over and we kind of tried to have like some sort of intervention with him. And he had been yelling and screaming at me for hours and I was cooking his food at the time. And he was sitting in the living room and I was in the kitchen and she was like, I've said all I can say and he just keeps going off. He doesn't want to listen. So I don't know what's going on with him, but it's between you two. I like, I have to go back to work because she was running the company. He had sold her his half of the business and she was working her fucking ass off. So she really doesn't have time to babysit us and deal with this bullshit. Yeah. And so while he was still yelling at me, I stopped making his food. I went into the living room and I got down where his calves were and I was holding onto his calves as he was still yelling and screaming at me. And I said, babe, I just got you back and I don't want to lose you. And I'm afraid whatever the fuck you're doing is going to kill you. I had warned him. I said, you are doing something that's dangerous. I don't know what the fuck you're doing, but you are not yourself. There Mm -hmm. is something going on here. Yeah. And he looked down at me at that point because I was like sobbing. I don't want to lose you. And he like touched me on my head and he goes, baby, you're not going to lose me. And I'm like, please stop. I don't know what you're doing, but I know something's not right with you. Please stop. And he finally kind of like calmed down, but it was like this constant battle of trying to figure out like, is he okay today? Is something going on with him? What's going on here? At one point I knew that he was, um, like detoxing because we got back from an expo and usually after an expo, we're both down for like a day or two because it's like three or four days of being on your feet, saying hi to everybody, taking pictures, all this high energy, everybody filming everything. And I have to not only film and edit like travel vlog, I've got to do workout videos for him too. Mm-hmm. So his channel and my channel, because he was allowing me to at least make a little bit of money from my YouTube channel mm-hmm. from doing travel vlogs with him, which to me was like a totally different person. Like you watch yeah. his YouTube videos and you go watch our videos together and it's like, oh, the softer side. Yeah. So it's like, yes, that's this guy. The guy that's on my YouTube channel is the guy I fell in love with because uh-huh. he would show his softer, Soft, gentler, yeah. nice, funny side as opposed to like, the, oh, I'm roided out and I'm angry and I like to eat lots of food kind of thing, you know? Uh-huh. But... I realized after one of the expos, like something was wrong and he was really sick. He was throwing up a bunch. I'm like, you need to go to the hospital. Like something's wrong. He was like shaking and having like sweating and stuff. I'm like, something's not right. And he's just like, I'm, I'm, I'm I'm detoxing. I'm just, I'm getting it all out of my system. So at that point he admitted like something was going on and he was like getting it out of the system. And I was like, okay, well, just let me know what, what you need. And he's like, can you just lay down with me and hold me? And I was like, yeah, absolutely. So I laid down next to him and he's like, oh no, it hurts. It hurts. Don't touch me. Don't touch me. And I was just like, I start crying because I feel so bad that he doesn't want to be touched because he's in so much pain. And so I'm like wrapping him in blankets because he's got cotton, hot and cold sweats. His temperature's all over the place. Mm-hmm. I'm like, are you sure you don't want to go to the hospital or the doctor? No, no, no. I'm fine. I'm fine. I know what this is. I've been through this before. What? Ugh. Okay. So I keep making him his food or whatever. Then the next day he's okay. And he's like, why aren't you touching me? And I'm like, what? And he goes, why aren't you having sex with me? And I'm like, what are you talking? Yesterday you weren't feeling good. Well, I want to have sex with you today. And if you don't have sex with me today, then somebody else will. And I'm like, what are, what the fuck are you talking about? And he periodically would do this shit to me if I wouldn't have sex with him because I wasn't feeling good or I'm on my period or whatever. He would threaten to cheat. So I was just like, okay, well, obviously he's feeling back to himself. So I need to go have sex with him. Yeah. So that was that. And it just, he kept doing that push and pull tug of war of like, touch me, don't touch me because he was feeling good and wasn't feeling good. So I kept knowing like something is up with him. 
Mm-hmm. And at one point, like I had pneumonia. We got back from Australia. I had pneumonia. We were supposed to be going to Germany. And I was like, please, like just, I need to get rid of my pneumonia. Was it going to the doctors yeah. and everything? And even when I was sick with pneumonia, he's like, well, you can still like blow me. And I was like, uh, no, because I can barely breathe without your dick in my mouth. And he's like, well, if you don't blow me, all I got to do is call one of these girls from the gym in my phone or one of the girls from the expos that's always like sliding their numbers in my DMs. Like I can just go fucking fuck one of them if you're not going to do it. But yeah. you know, if you love me, Chanel, you would just fucking do it. You'd suck it up and you'd fucking do it. You're just so poor me. And I'm like, oh God. I have fucking pneumonia, but okay. Do you think he ever did cheat, or do you think he was... He had me with him nearly 24-7. Okay. So there was only one expo he went to without me, and I don't know. Yeah. He had always told me and told his ex-wife I was the only person he never cheated on. And I was oh. like, dude, that's like hella fucked up, but wow. okay, thanks. Yeah. But it was just like, okay. Because you put up with probably more shit than other people did, because... Because I just your past. wanted and to like be loved yeah. and I wanted somebody to love me forever. And anybody else who had cheated never gave me the blueprint as to like how to get somebody to not cheat on you. And I uh-huh. thought, oh, well, if I obey your every command and do as I'm told and I'm your like concubine like and your fucking workhorse, no problem. Like yeah. you won't cheat on me and you won't leave me. So what was the day like that he died? Because you were with him, right? Yeah. So that was uh, another few months later. Uh-huh. We got up really early in the morning to go work out at the gym and we were filming and he also had a photo shoot scheduled for us. And while I was getting ready, he was snorting his pre-workout in the living room, which he periodically did. And there's like videos of him doing it online. Mm -hmm. But it was uh, from a brand called Concrete. It wasn't even his brand. He was snorting like the lemon lime concrete fucking, I think it's called like Aftershock or something. It's like this really intense fucking pre-workout. So he Uh snorted it. We go down to the gym. He does his workout. I film his workout. Um, I'm working out with one of my girlfriends. We did a photo shoot, and then we head home. And that was, like, really early in the morning. Probably, I think it was, like, around noon or 1, something like that. He was like, okay, well, um, when you're done editing this portion, I want you to come cut my hair for me. Uh Uh-huh. And I was like, okay. So I go into the bathroom, and I'm going to cut his hair for him. And he starts to like lean forward against the wall, like puts his arm up to like rest his head and stretches the back of his neck out. And I figured it was like to get rid of like that neck roll that guys kind of have when they're sitting up straight. So that I can properly, you know, shave the back of his head. And as I start to get to that part, he starts to slowly fall back towards me. And I'm like, babe, are you okay? And he weighed nearly 300 pounds and is like six feet tall. Mm -hmm. So, and we're in a small bathroom. Yeah. So I realized as he's falling back that his eyes are rolled into the back of his head and I went to try to catch this massive dude, and he just slipped through my fingers because he'd been fucking sweating. And he kind of bonked his head on the door jam when he fell. So I was like, did he knock himself unconscious on the door? Did he lock his knees? Is that why he passed out? What the fuck is going on? So he's kind of like slumped on his side, breathing funny, but he kind of had sleep apnea, but never went to the doctor for it. Mm-hmm. So I thought maybe he knocked himself unconscious and was having some sort of sleep apnea episode. So I was slapping his face, screaming his name, trying to wake him up. Nothing was working. I'm like, this isn't right. So I ran to where my phone was charging the computer, unplugged it, called 911, put it on speakerphone, threw it next to him, and for over 11 minutes, I performed CPR to the best of my ability. Yeah. When they showed up, he was non-responsive. It mm-hmm. took three EMTs to pick this massive man up and put him into our living room. They gave him, I believe, two doses of Narcan because of what they saw on the dining room table because he left his pre-workout that he'd been snorting out on the, the dining room table or the coffee table. So they assumed it was like Coke or fentanyl or whatever. So they gave him two doses of Narcan and they defibbed him, I think, twice and kept working on him for like a half hour. They took me outside because I was uh, ready to have a stroke because my heart rate was ridiculous. So they put me in an ambulance. Yeah. When they finally brought him back to life after about a half hour, they took him to um, the hospital and they started to put him into a drug-induced coma to try to further protect his brain. Mm -hmm. So during that time... I'm in an ambulance. His ex-wife shows up because I'm like fucking, he's not breathing, but we'll call 911. I said, I did. They're here. They're working on him. She's like, I'm on my way. She fucking leaves work, hauls ass. She like jumps into the fucking ambulance that I'm in. And she's like, it's okay. I'm the ex-wife. Cause everybody's like, who the fuck is this lady? <laughs> and they're like, she has to calm down or she's going to have a stroke. We're going to have to give her something like me because my heart's just like, <laughs> yeah, it's so bad. And so I don't even remember what the fuck this woman said to me. And no matter how her and I are not friends now, I will never forget that she was there for me for this. She yeah. whispered something in my ear. I don't remember what the fuck it was, but whatever the fuck she said calmed me down. And they were like, I don't know what she just said to you, but your heart rate's going down finally. Uh-huh. Went to go back into my apartment and the police wouldn't let me into my apartment. 
they had gone into my apartment and were like ransacking my apartment looking through shit. Yeah. So they finally let me in and they start asking me all kinds of questions, like no search warrant or anything. And I don't really quite know how that works, but that's generally speaking, not how that works. Right. That's kind of weird that they just go in yeah. and don't let me into my own apartment, start looking through my shit. Uh huh. And they were like, can you explain where these 20 bottles of steroids came from? And I was like, no, can you explain to me how his drawer from the bathroom ended up in the living room? Yeah. So, and they're like, do you take steroids? I was just like, dude. So then I start getting questioned about all of this shit. And do you know what this is on the table? I'm like, yeah, it's this pre-workout. The bottle's right there, sir. Uh-huh. And we don't know if it's fentanyl, so we're going to have to fucking test it. We think that it's Coke or fentanyl. And I was like, oh, shit. Yeah, f- go for it. I don't know. No, as far as I know, it's fucking pre-workout, dude. It sparkles, and it fucking smells like lemon lime. So yeah. I'm not, you know, an expert on fentanyl or cocaine, but, you know, I've seen Scarface enough to know that that's not what cocaine looks like according to the movies. Uh-huh. So... It was just like a fucking hot mess and a half. They finally let me go be with him at the hospital after trying to ask me a bunch of questions. I honestly was just like, fuck it, I don't care. I just want to go see my boyfriend. So I got to the hospital, got in touch with his family and everything, and I did not leave his side for the first three days. He um, flatlined uh, the second night we were there, and they brought him back, and his dad was like, I'm on my way. I'm trying to get there as fast as I can because his dad lives in California. Mm -hmm. But I would only leave his side every three days to go home and take a shower and come back. Mm -hmm. But as soon as we got into the hospital, um, there was like a conversation that I was not a part of where one of his family members had called and asked, well, if he dies, who gets the money? Well, everything's already in his ex-wife's name, so you don't get anything. Could you just come here and try to wake him up? He's in a coma. Like, there's no guarantee he's going to die. We're actually trying to wake him up. This is like the day that he's gone into the hospital. Bought this woman... And her, you know, I'm just going to fucking say it. This is mom. So yeah. bought his mother and two sons, first class flights to Florida, rental car, hotel, everything fucking taken care of for them. All they had to do was get on the fucking plane. Uh-huh. So she calls me while I'm reading to Rich, trying to wake him up. And I'm like holding his hand and shit. And she like goes off on me about how his ex-wife is like going to try to strand them there and all this other shit. I'm like, she don't even like you. Why the fuck would she try to strand you in a, in a state that she lives in? Like, bitch, yeah. just get on the fucking plane. Like, I'm holding your son's hand. I'm holding your spot. I need you to get on the fucking plane and just be here for him. Uh-huh. She's like, no, absolutely not. How dare you talk to me this way? I'm like, girl, you need to learn to be a little bit more appreciative. Fuck you. And I like hung up on his bitch of a mom. And she, uh-huh. weren't, she wasn't even talking to him at the time. They hadn't talked for, I don't even know how many months at that point, but he had this on again, off again relationship with her. Yeah. So I'm sure that part of his issues were because his mom, the which is a whole other, woman. yeah, whole yeah. other fucking bag of dog shit. So... She was calling the hospital saying that I did something to him. I must have done something. It's all my fault. Mm -hmm. And that I'm like trying to murder him for money or whatever. So apparently I was like under surveillance while I was in there with him. And I'm just like, dude, what the, what the fuck? And his dad shows up and we're all there together. Flew his best friend out to try to get his friend to wake him up. And, um, after about two weeks, Mm -hmm. I think it was two weeks, the beginning of the third week. The beginning of the third week, they said, well, now he is no longer considered to be in um, a coma, but in a vegetative state. And according to his written wishes, we have to let him go. Yeah. And apparently the same doctor that took care of Terry Schiavo, do you know who that is? Uh-uh. It's way before your time, I'm sure. <laughs> Terry Schiavo was a woman who was in a coma for like two decades or over a decade or something. And uh-huh. her husband was in a fight with her parents. Her parents didn't want to like pull the plug and let her go. And the husband was like, no, I want to fucking move on with my life. Like unplug her and like let her rest in peace. This woman's like not there. She's yeah. like lizard brain. And so... This guy, her doctor, was our second opinion. Because the first opinion was like, yeah, there's like less than a like 3% chance that he's going to fucking come out of this, right? This is like mm-hmm. lizard brain. When he's like looking at you, he's not really looking at you. It's just reflexes of his body, like firing uh, off neurons yeah. and shit. So the second doctor said the same thing. And ultimately, his dad and his ex-wife were like, yeah, I think that we have to let him go. And his dad was like, I mean, Chanel is his person. Like, what does Chanel think? And I said, you can't ask me that, sir. Because I love your son so much that I would stay here with him until I die. I would fucking wipe his ass and change his fucking diapers or whatever the fuck needs to be done. Like, this is my person. I love him so much. As mm-hmm. much as he can be fucking mean sometimes and cruel, like, I knew he was a good person. And that there, whatever fucked up love story we had, we loved each other as much as we possibly could with as damaged as we were. Yeah. And so I just, I kept staying with him. And I stayed and I stayed and I stayed until he took his last breath. And I had asked... The, uh, the doctors that were, the nurses that were giving him uh, his medications to let him comfortably pa- pass, when you notice that he's ready to go, can you please wake me up 
so that I can see him go because I would sleep like an otter. I would like hold his hand while I slept so that if he jerked or had a seizure or anything, I would wake up and you're okay, you're okay. Uh-huh. She goes, well, why would you want to wake up and watch that? And I said, because I cannot have in my head for the rest of my life the look of shock and horror on his face as I was giving him CPR. I yeah. need to know that he's going to go peacefully. And she's like, I didn't know that you did that. And I go, yeah, for 11 fucking minutes, I tried to save him. And I need him to know that I'm here with him when he goes the last time. Like, I love him and I'm not leaving him. Mm-hmm. And she goes, okay, if I'm in here when that happens, I'll be sure to wake you up. So she came in one time after I'd fallen asleep to give him his meds and... I went to readjust my pillow and I let go of his hand and I fell back asleep. About a half hour later, she came in and she said, honey, Rich just died. And I said, what? And she said, Rich just died. And I started shaking uncontrollably and shaking yeah. my head and, and I couldn't even look at him because I was freaking out. So I tried calling his ex-wife. I tried calling his dad for them to come down because it was like Like 12, he died 12. on his own? Yeah. Not, uh... After they had pumped him full of all of the shit to let him go peacefully. Yeah. Like they stopped giving him food and water and they were just pumping him full of, um, Oh good Lord. What was it? (sighs) Ativan and morphine Mm -hmm. so that he wouldn't have seizures. And so that he was just like sleeping the whole time basically, but he lasted nearly a week without food and water and just being drugged up on all the shit. Yeah. And, um, he passed away at 1212. So I was just like, well, what the fuck? So I stayed there and his, his uh, ex-wife and his dad came down and they said their goodbyes and they said, are you coming home? And I said, no, I'm going to wait for the coroners to come get him because I don't want to leave him alone. So the nurses asked if I need anything else. And I said, can I lay down with him one last time? And they said, yeah, of course. You could have been doing that the whole time. Fuck, if I'd known that, I would have been laying in bed with him the whole time instead <laughs> of in a recliner holding his hand. But I, um, I went to move his arm to the side and his leg and I didn't realize that rigor mortis had already started to set in. So it was like, he was already very heavy. So me trying to move everything, uh, like nothing wanted to move. Yeah. And you know, when you're going through that trauma, you don't realize when you go to, sorry, when you go to lay down on your person, there's nothing in there. There's no sound. Yeah. It's like when you, when you go to lay your head down on your pillow at night, <clears throat> sorry. And oh, you no, hear that, apologize. that crinkling noise, you hear a crinkling. That's all you hear. And it's just stuff shutting off and shutting down. Mm-hmm. And I had this overwhelming feeling that, feeling that he was standing over me telling me I was being morbid and that I had to go home. And just before the, the coroners came, I, I left him. And I said, I loved you then. I love you now. I'll love you always. Come mm-hmm. find me when it's my time because I don't want to go anywhere without you. And I left. And the flood of bullshit when I woke up. Yeah. Because his mom was already spreading rumors that I had fucking done something to him and people were posting about it's fishy, it's suspicious. They found a white substance in his fucking house, all the shit from TMZ. And while I was in the hospital with him, TMZ had like sent me this bullshit text message about like, so sorry to have to contact you at this time, but we would like to interview. Bitch, you don't have to contact me right now. Why are you? And the local news did the same thing. And like, how the fuck did you get my number? But it's things like that that I'm like, people don't realize like how heartless social media can make people be. Like they yeah. don't realize like we're real people. This was a real fucking situation. And I had repeatedly posted like, please give us our time and space and be respectful of the fact that, like we're trying to like get him to wake up. Mm-hmm. And now it's like, please be respectful of the fact that he's passed. Then people yeah. were mad that we didn't make his funeral service public. And I'm like, so that fucking weirdos could come over and take selfies with his dead body? Fuck yeah, you. Not- it was like the weirdest shit. And having his relatives from his mother's side of the family come up to me during his celebration of life after the funeral and saying, don't worry, honey, we know that you didn't kill him. I'm like, what? Oh yeah. Well, she's been going around telling everybody that you did something to him for money. Wow. I had no money. Yeah. You didn't get any money. I was relying on his ex-wife to fucking help me because I wasn't being paid by the company. And she's like, move in with me. We got to get you out of your apartment. Your lease is over and done with. You don't have enough money to pay for that because you don't have a fucking job. So I had to move in with her and I wasn't being paid by the company. And then uh, two days, two or three days after he passed, the company asked me to make a public statement and make a video explaining what happened to him. And I was still in shock and probably said some inaccurate shit and giggled in a fucking uncomfortable fashion because it really hadn't set in that he was gone. So I, at one point I like chuckled about something that reminded me of him, but in like a manner that made me think he was still going to come walking in the door with his big ass personality. Mm -hmm. So it just wasn't phasing me yet. Then they got a bunch of flack for the fucking video and said, well, you make us look bad, so you can no longer be associated with the company. Oh, my God. They had already told me that I would have a position with the company in some capacity, still doing clothing design like I was doing or filming and editing something else or helping with marketing with some other idea that I had. 
Mm-hmm. And then they're like, no, you don't have a position with the company. And it would be an insult to all the people working in the warehouse if you just all of a sudden got this great position as the, you know, um, clothing designer or doing marketing stuff. I'm like, how is it an insult to them? I was fucking folding all yeah. of our orders on a hardwood floor in our living room in LA before it turned into this big giant company. Mm-hmm. So it was like, I didn't get credit for like for anything that I had done and I wasn't going to get paid. And they had me hand over all of my content I'd ever shot and said, well, it belongs to us now, not you. We have the rights to his name and likeness, not you. And not they, that I want to make money off of it, Yeah. but it was just extra, just like, fuck you, fuck you, fuck you. And I was like, uh-huh. holy crap. Yeah, what's so crazy is, like, when I, like, looked up articles, it would be, like, girlfriend of Rich Piana. That's, is that how you say it? Rich mm-hmm. Piana? Um, when describing the incident, and they were still making it seem like you were guilty without any evidence of wrongdoing. Like, I, I noticed that they were using phrases like, she claimed, or she says she was doing this, but, like, do we really, like, it was just so weird the way that they were phrasing the situation and it it didn't even seem like you were a point of person of interest other than from his family for the most part as far as I'm to understand that's the case and um there his mom I guess has been bombarding the police department so much that it made its way to the state district attorney's office and I had to get an attorney involved Mm -hmm. and I had to be on this long ass phone call where they were like asking me, do you know how to do CPR? When was the last time that you took a CPR class? Um, did you inherit anything from Rich? Do you know anything about his drug problem? Like all of the shit. And then the last questions that the guy asked me was, by the way, his will. And I said, I'm not in it. I wasn't witness to it being made and I was not witness to it being signed. And he goes, oh, oh, okay. Well, don't you yeah. think it's odd that He didn't leave you anything? I said, nope, that's about right. Yeah. Well, his ex-wife has left everything. I said, yeah, and she worked her ass off for him. So what do you want? Uh Uh-huh. Well, we just want to know, you know, if you know anything about how it was signed or whatever. I said, no, I wasn't even witness to it being signed. Yeah. When we had moved to Florida, he had asked me what I wanted if anything ever happened to him, and I said, nothing. I want you to know that I'm here with you because I love you and I want to be with you. I don't even know why you want to talk about this right now. He goes, well, you know, now I have health insurance, and it's offered with the health insurance, and I just want to make sure, you know, that you're taken care of. I said, then do whatever you want to do. If you want to leave me something, great, but I don't, I don't want anything. Yeah. And his ex-wife had a conversation with me privately when her and I happened to be going to the mall one day, and she said, he's worried that you don't want to be in his will. And I said, why? And she goes, because he thinks that you have nothing holding you here. So he thinks if he's going to fucking croak on me and leave me something, that's going to make me fucking stay? Like, what the fuck, bro? No. Yeah. Like, I was like, I really want him to know I'm with him because I love him. Not shit. Not stuff. I've Uh I've had other jobs before him. I found a magic job after I fucking left him when he was being an idiot. So if something happens to him, I can fucking put my big girl panties on and fucking find my way all over again. It'll happen. It's, I can do that. I said, I don't want anything to happen to him, but I'm like, dude, if worse comes to worse or we break up or whatever, like I'll be fine, but I don't want him to think I'm with him for shit. Like what the fuck? Mm -hmm. Of course, in retrospect now, I'm kind of like, hey, it would have (laughs) been nice if you left me at least like the opportunity to get paid for my work or get photo credit. I don't even get photo credit for the shit that I did. Yeah, why do you think you were, like, an easier target than his ex-wife was? Because she's a much stronger woman than I am, and oh. <laughs> she's, uh, she's not on the internet like I am. Yeah. Of course, I'm, like, at the forefront of everything. And I'm young, well, mm-hmm. not that young, but I'm younger than she is, and, like, she has money and lawyers, and I don't have those means. So when people wanted to start making YouTube videos and bash me and accuse me of this heinous bullshit from people that didn't even fucking know us like it doesn't really affect her or her business but yeah. she wanted to like kind of detach herself from me and the business so that it wouldn't affect her what business. Is now her business yeah why do you think the i mean i guess like you know he was the one who died but the media focused so much on his death and how you might be the cause of it versus like how it would be affecting you and like how did it affect you because i don't think people have really asked you Oh, I was so fucked up. And before I left the hospital, one of the doctors had said, you're going to need to seek counseling because you're going to have PTSD. I'm like, for what? And they're like, Did you, do you not realize, <laughs> like, you fucking tried to save this man, like, repeatedly and gave him CPR and shit, and you're, like, being accused of all this heinous stuff? And you sat here in a hospital for nearly 30 days by his side, hardly mm-hmm. ate, hardly slept, yeah. hardly showered. It's kind of gross. Like there's, uh-huh. there's something wrong in there. Like you're not going to be okay. And I'm like, no, 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 I'm, I'm fine. I just want to make sure that my person's going to be okay. You know, like 
Mm-hmm. And then when he wasn't okay. No, it was like so fucked up. I was in like a super duper fucking dark place. I just felt like Alice falling down a fucking rabbit hole. You know, like yeah. Alice in Wonderland sort of shit. Like you just keep falling. Like there is no fucking, you know, checkered floor to fall onto. Like you're just falling down this dark ass hole where you're just like, my person is gone. I have no purpose in life. Mm-hmm. And when I thought that I had a position with 5%, like the company after he died... I felt so much better because I was like, okay, great. I have all these crazy marketing ideas. I feel like I'm channeling rich because I have these great ideas. You know, you need to make videos with all the athletes so that they're kind of like the liaison and the last connection between him and rich. And, you know, you you guys really need to put that out there that these are the people that rich liked and you need to have these people spread his message because that's what this should be. And they didn't like that. And it's just, nope. And you make us look bad. So goodbye. And Mm -hmm. I get that they did what they felt they had to do to make their company continue to to look good and get rid of anybody who makes them look bad. I get it, but it, it really made me feel like, wow, I have no purpose. I have no meaning and I am, I'm shit. I guess I'm not that smart. I guess I'm not that talented and that mm-hmm. I'm not needed. So now what? Yeah. I don't know what the fuck to do with myself? Uh-huh. And I was just like depressed as fuck and I don't drink or do drugs or anything. So mm-hmm. I was really just like, man, like I have to like be here with, with my feelings. Yeah. And it was, it was rough. Yeah. And, um, this other broad that he used to date that lived nearby was um, apparently being sent to get into the apartment to try to take some of his stuff. I had to call the police. Mm-hmm. I had to get uh, security cameras for inside the house because there was like threats uh, of them breaking in to get what they yeah. wanted, like all kinds of weird shit. And I was like, this is just too much to fucking deal with. And that was one of the reasons why I moved in with his ex to a different place that nobody knew about. Mm-hmm. Cause I was like, I don't want to deal with this. Like this is too much while I'm trying to figure out what I'm going to do with my life. Yeah. And she's like, well, maybe you should like go back to school or something. And I was just like, I just, I don't know. Like I felt like shit about the situation. I started to resent her because I was just like, dude, like you're co-owner of this company. And even you're just like, Hey, like asked out later, like you make us look bad and you have to go work in the warehouse now. Like what, Mm -hmm. what the fuck? Like, yeah, this is not what I was agreeing to, but all right. Do you think there was like a double standard if you were the one to have died? Like oh my how- God, absolutely. Are you kidding me? If I yeah. had died, everybody probably would have been like, oh, whatever, Rich. She was just some dumb fucking, you know, gold digger. She was just with you for your money. Uh-huh. And you'll just find another fucking bimbo at the next expo. Like people would have been like, yeah, whatever. She was just some stupid fucking slut that he was banging. Yeah. He was, she was just his camera girl because he would always say like, oh, my camera girl. And it was like uh-huh. an on-running joke. So yeah, like I just didn't have as much, I don't know, as much weight on the world as he did so after like after he died you said you jumped into a relationship really quickly after right because like you didn't know how to like be alone with yourself and your thoughts and your feelings no not at all because I was so used to being with him 24 7 Mm -hmm. that I was like what the fuck am I supposed to do with myself Mm -hmm. like I'm I was like getting up and doing the routine that he gave me like he gave me a schedule of what I had to do like get up (laughs) <laughs> I'll touch on this later. I had to get up an hour before he did so I could go do my hour of fasted cardio because I'd eaten ice cream with him the night before. And in order to eat my ice cream, I had to earn it by having two hours of cardio. Wow. So I'd get up and I would do my cardio and I would do my weight training and do all this other stuff and filming and editing and do my other hour of cardio in, in the evening. So when he wasn't there, I was like, well, I'm still following the schedule, but what am I supposed to be doing? Because he's mm-hmm. not here. It was kind of weird. Yeah. And some of the um, the athletes that were on the team would check in on me, but it was like few and far between. And one in particular was a guy that Rich actually liked a lot. And he had said, like, I really like this guy. Like, he's a good guy. Like, there was a there was a fight that broke out at one of the expos. Somebody came up and punched Rich in the face or tried to punch him in the face. I didn't quite get the gist of exactly what was happening from where I was standing. Mm-hmm. And one of the other athletes was like, hey, like, don't, don't go over there. You can't help him. And I was like, but he'll be mad if I'm, like, not over there to, like, help him because I should be helping him. And he goes, trust me, this is one of those things he doesn't want you to help with. Just fucking stay over here in the booth. You'll be fine. Uh-huh. And so I told Rich later, like, he told me, like, don't go over there just so you know. Because I, I always had to answer to him, like, this is why I talked to this guy because I wasn't allowed to talk to guys. Yeah. So this is why I was talking to this athlete. He goes, oh, no, he's a good guy. He's, he's a cop. He's fine. Like, I'm not worried about him. Like, uh-huh. I know that he was just looking out for you. Yeah. So he was the one that kept checking in on me after Rich died. Uh huh. And um, he would like sit there and FaceTime me until I fell asleep sometimes because I had really bad insomnia after he died. Mm-hmm. And if he was watching me and I started having nightmares while I was sleeping, he would scream into the phone to wake me up and tell me that I was okay because I would like wake up screaming that I'm like, I'm trying to save his life, but I can't save him. Like I kept having nightmares about trying to save Rich. Yeah. And I jumped into the relationship with this guy because 
I felt safe with him. He felt like he was like, you know, knight in shining armor trying to rescue me. And I also thought, well, the universe put me through all of this horrible shit. Maybe the universe is finally trying to like be like, well, here, we'll make up for it. And we'll send you somebody that's going to kind of help you to like feel better again. Yeah. That didn't work out either. But, um, <laughs> you know, it's just, it's, it's some gnarly shit that you go through. And um, I got really... I don't like to use the word depressed, but I did. I got depressed. I got so depressed. I didn't, after yeah. I moved in with him, um, I didn't get out of bed for like a month. Of course, mm-hmm. if I had to like shower or pee, I got up. I yeah. ate a little bit of food. But I binge watched Six Feet Under, of all things. Uh-huh. And it's a show probably from when you were very young, because I know it's from when I was young. But it's about people dying. Like these people own a funeral home. And yeah. it's like they speak to the dead while they're like doing their autopsy and shit. And like, well, mm-hmm. how did you die? And the, you see how their family members act or react to how they, their death. Yeah. And I'm like, oh, well, that makes me feel better because some of these people are emulating the things I'm feeling or they're talking about what I'm feeling. So in this weird way, like, it made me feel a little bit better and I understood it better. Yeah. I was like, okay, so it is normal to, like, not want to get out of bed. It's normal to fucking wish that you had died instead of them. And it's normal to sit there and ask God why and be like, I prayed to you. I don't pray. I never ask you for anything. But when he was in the hospital, I asked you, please take me instead or let me go with him. Like everybody loves Rich so much more than me. He has so much more to offer the world. Like, why aren't you taking me? And I wasn't taken. Yeah. So then it was like, fuck. So yeah, I was like super depressed and shit and Uh going through therapy um, and explaining my very strange relationship with Rich. A lot of therapists, because I've had four since his passing. Yeah. Um, I didn't like the first couple because they were blaming him for everything. And I'm like, how dare you? Don't you dare blame Rich for anything. This isn't his fault. Like, uh-huh. I, I didn't try hard enough. I must not have tried hard enough. I should have done more. I should have, you know, gotten him more help. I should have pushed him more. Like, yeah. like uh, that wouldn't have worked out for you. He probably would have kicked you out. Like, you need to, like, pay attention to this shit. Like, he was a very fucked up relationship. And that was, like, emotional domestic violence, right? Or is that, co- yeah. right? EMD. And so, um, another therapist, that was like the first two female therapists. I was uh-huh. like, maybe it's cause they're women and they're like feminist and they're like against men or, you know, I had like yeah. this <laughs> fucked up like mindset of shit. The third therapist was a guy and he was like, you need to stop praising your abuser. I was like, Whoa, hang on. Excuse me. And he was like, yo, from like a man standpoint, like he wouldn't yeah. even let you shit in your own house because women don't poop or fart. Oh my so God. So he was part of the reason why you have digestive problems he would yell and scream at you to the point for like hours on end that you would start dry heaving or vomiting and would continue to fucking yell and scream at you until you would suck his dick and tell him that you loved him and that you were so sorry, baby, and it would never happen again. He goes, how do you not see that that's abuse? And I go, I, I don't, I don't know. I just thought, you know, like I had to do what I had to do for the person I loved. And they're like, well, that's really fucked up. Stop thinking that way. You need to yeah. unravel that stuff. And I ended up getting a fourth therapist that was also a guy. And he goes, yeah, the last one was right. That's abuse. Like, you need to pay attention uh-huh. to that shit. Like, wow, yeah. And I'm like, I take accountability for the fact that I, like, I was young and naive and very hungry for love and wanting somebody to want me as much as I wanted them. And I felt like I finally found that. And mm-hmm. I, like I said, I felt like I gave, somebody was giving me the blueprint to get them to like keep me yeah. and always want me. And so they're like, yeah, don't don't do that anymore. That's not healthy. No, not so healthy. So it's like at all. I've had to go through a lot with like therapy and stuff and realizing like it wasn't a healthy relationship in a lot of aspects. And then being with the guy after him who's like nothing like him, I was like, whoa, what the f- you don't want to yell and scream at me because I fucking scrambled your eggs instead of cooking them over easy? That's that's weird. He's like, No, it's weird that you expect me to fucking yell at you for that. Yeah. And I was like, oh. Or, like, trying to, like, go to the bathroom. Uh, I'm used to having to wait until I was at the gym or the supermarket to be able to go to the bathroom. So then living with a guy who's, like, really, like, no, dude, you got to fucking fart. You got to take a shit. I don't care. Like, do your thing. Like, it's, yeah. it's a human bodily function. I'm like, oh, no, girls don't fart or poop. He's like, wow. on what planet? Yeah. And I was like, oh. And he's, like, wow. used to drinking, like, dating girls who, like, drink and eat nachos. So he's uh-huh. like, yeah, trust me, they do fart and poop. And I was like, <laughs> oh, okay. So... It's, it's taken a lot for me to, um, to try to be like emotionally and mentally healthy and realize like that wasn't a healthy relationship. And as much as I, I know that somebody's gonna be like, wow, you're twisted. As much as I, I love him and I will always love him. I do realize that it wasn't a healthy relationship and it is so hard to say that out loud. And it is so hard to say that he was abusive because I'm like, no, maybe I wasn't doing enough. Maybe I wasn't like following his instructions enough. Maybe I wasn't a good enough girlfriend. And I'm like, now, in retrospect, I'm like, bro, like, you had it made. Yeah. <laughs> so, you're welcome. <laughs> yeah, oh my gosh. Most people wouldn't put up with that shit. But, 
you know, it's just him preying on you and your insecurities and everything. Um, but I mean, life didn't really get a lot easier after that, right? Because there was a lot of like, there was a lot of online hate. People were making YouTube videos about you. Those yeah. YouTube videos are still up. Yeah, and YouTube won't take them down. I'm like, hi. Like some of them are like pretty violent, and like the things that they imply. Um, one in particular, these guys are like sitting there for like 45 minutes talking about how I should cut my tits off and sell them if I need money. And I uh -huh. should create a go fuck me account. And I'm like, what the fuck, what the fuck did I do to you dudes? Like what the hell's wrong with your like millimeter yeah. Peters and your fucking tiny ass fragile ego that you have to bash a woman who's been through like the most traumatic fucking thing possible Yeah. because what, what the, so that you can get views on YouTube. Mm -hmm. That's really what it boils down to. And I'm like. Okay, so that was after I like tried to start my clothing line. Somebody else was trying to be nice, as far as I know, and made a GoFundMe in my name to try to get me a booth at the Arnold Expo. And I had said, please don't do that. Like, I'm not ready for that. I just started my clothing line. I don't have that much in stock. And I can't really afford all of that right now. I don't have the means to do that. He goes, well, that's why I'm going to start a GoFundMe for you. And I'll let everybody know that I started it for you. Mm -hmm. And I was like, I, I don't really want to do that, you yeah. know, but I also didn't want to fight with this guy. And I was just like... You, just do you, but I'm, I'm just really not into it. I really don't want that. I should have been more hard pressed about like, absolutely not. Don't do that. Yeah. But regardless, I'm not the one who fucking made it. And I'm still the one who got shit for it. And mm -hmm. they even said in this 45 minute long video talking shit about me, like, oh yeah, so-and-so made it for her. But you know, like, fuck her. She's a bitch. Like she's probably a money grabbing whore yeah. with a name like Chanel. Like she must be a gold digger. That's the only reason yeah. why she was with rich. I'm like, what the fuck does this have to do with the price of tea in China? Uh -huh. Like it was just like the weirdest shit. Yeah. So that kind of made my fucking sales go down. My following yeah. went down a bit. I was getting less and less support, more and more With hate. like OnlyFans too. Death threats, everything. I hadn't even started OnlyFans yet. So after oh, wow. that, ooh, sorry, after mm -hmm. that I started Patreon. Okay. And then somebody was like, switch from Patreon to OnlyFans, it's so much better. So I started my OnlyFans because I was like, of course, needed money because uh -huh. when Rich had passed and I was like trying to apply for jobs, like normal jobs and all this other stuff, um... People would Google my name when I would apply for jobs. And I didn't realize that until one company finally responded to me and was like, hey, you know, you have like really good qualifications. We're just curious if you can maybe explain some of the accusations, you know, like mm -hmm. looming around you on social media and, you know, YouTube and the stuff about murder and drugs. Like, you know, we just want to make sure that that's not going to be a problem for our company. Yeah. So that's why I started my clothing line because I was just like, Hmm. So this is this is how this goes, huh? There's just like a bunch of fucking bullshit said about me and everybody's going to fucking believe whatever the fuck they read. And even if they don't, I'm going to walk into this office every day and people will be like, oh, that's the girl that supposedly killed her boyfriend. Like, uh -huh. fuck this. So yeah. that's why I started the clothing line. Then after I started the clothing line, there was the GoFundMe drama. Uh -huh. And then there was like the fucking Patreon OnlyFans drama. Somebody had bitched about my Patreon that I was like charging too much. And I didn't really quite know what to charge anyway. Mm -hmm. But I was also like, well, you know, I know that Playmates, you know, we're getting like 25000 for like a centerfold. So, I mean, if they're getting 25000 for a centerfold, I mean, I should be charging, you know, like, I think I was charging like $500 a month for wow. like topless <laughs> shit on fucking Patreon. So I'm sorry to any of my original Patreon people. Um, <laughs> I've uh, gotten a really strong grasp on reality since then. And I realized mm -hmm. I can't be charging that much because yeah. other girls, you know, it's competitive market and they're charging a bit less. So I ended up getting onto OnlyFans and... This guy discovered that I had gotten on there, like took screenshots of everything that he could and made a YouTube video about it and mm -hmm. said, Rich Piana's girlfriend made an OnlyFans. I'm asking for a refund. Oh my God. And then this video I think is like, I don't know, 20 minutes long or whatever. And he just goes on this like 20 minute tangent about how I'm not worth it because I'm not doing anything filthy and I charge too much, but she takes pretty pictures. Uh -huh. So at least he said I take pretty pictures, right? Well, that's yeah. fucking nice. But then I was like being called a whore and a gold digger and all this other shit all over again. And I'm just like, dude, for what the fuck did I do to you? Why are you mar like pinpointing uh -huh. me? And then I realized, oh, well, he didn't even say Chanel. He didn't say Chanel Renee. He didn't say Chanel Renee's OnlyFans. He said Rich Piana's girlfriend made an OnlyFans. Like yeah. I don't even have a fucking name. But they sometimes get me confused with the girl that he had married for a short time because she was blonde and had big boobs too. Mm -hmm. So they're just like, oh yeah, it's interchangeable. It could be either girl, but she was with Rich. I'm like, what the fuck? Yeah. So the guy that I was dating at the time reached out to the guy on social media and said, hey man, like this is like really upsetting to her and it's like fucking with her shit. Can you please just like take this down? Like it's really not cool. Because YouTube wouldn't take it down. Nope. It had my copywritten content on it. It was obviously sexual content mm -hmm. and it's bullying and they won't fucking take it down. Yeah. I'm like, what, what the fuck? So he had asked him politely to take it down. He's like, absolutely not. Like, fuck you. Fuck her. Like she should be thankful I didn't say worse. Oh my 
God. For what? Like, what did I do to deserve shit talk anyway, bro? Yeah. Like, you guys shit talk when I'm supposedly being a gold digger and relying on a man who I fucking helped to make a millionaire. Mm -hmm. Like, and I have nothing to show for it. I don't even fucking get photo credit, as I said. Like, I don't even get any kind of credit, let alone money, for the work that I did. Mm Mm-hmm. And him taking care of me, I'm sorry, that's not payment for the work I did. Yeah. Or the shit that I endured. Yeah. To make him, you know, make his dreams a reality. Like, no, that's not cool. So I'm a gold digger if I'm doing that shit. But if I'm hustling my tits off, like literally, and I'm trying to make something of myself on my own, well, then I'm not worth it. And I'm a piece of shit. So figure it out, because they can't be both. Either I'm a money-grubbing poor bitch that fucking needs your, your dollar, Mm-hmm. Or I'm a fucking gold digger. Which one is it? Because if I'm a gold digger, I'm obviously a really fucking bad one because I've had to start from scratch all over again. Yeah. Um, I know with your OnlyFans now, like, you're very thankful because no man, you don't have to rely on them. I mean, you rely on men for, like, subscriptions and payments. Yeah, I'm but like, you, I do rely on men. I'm not going to lie about that. I still rely on men. Yeah, but just in a very different way. Yeah. Um, it's very liberating. It is is to a degree because I realize that I will always rely on a man. Whether I'm in corporate America or whether I am doing OnlyFans or stripping, I will always rely on a man for money or in a relationship, of course, which I don't want to do ever. Yeah. I really don't. But, you know, working in an office job, you're fucking overworked and underpaid. Like, oh, okay, cool. That sounds great. I'm going to go out and fucking try to do that again. Plus the harassment of, like, possibly your coworkers, like, Googling you and looking your shit up. Like, ugh. Mm-hmm. I don't want to deal with that shit for minimum wage. No, thank yeah. you. So... It's just, like, the constant struggle of, like, I, I realized, like, I hate to say this. Somebody's going to hate me for saying it. But that James Brown song, This is a Man's World, it uh-huh. still very much is. And I love men. Trust me. I mean, <laughs> women are beautiful, uh, but I'm not down to dine at the pink taco stand. I don't know. I might try to switch teams at some point, but for right now, I still love Dick. Just proof it isn't a choice. Yeah, so exactly. Because <laughs> it's like, trust me, if it was a choice, I don't think I would have picked one so complicated. And yeah. speaking of like gold digger and complicated, I think that if I was going to be a gold digger, I, I wouldn't have picked somebody that was so complicated to be with. I would have just picked some geriatric old fuck that wasn't on steroids or drugs and was just like, oh, hey, play with my penis every now and then. Okay. Yeah. But that's just not my MO. No, uh-huh. no shame in your game if that's like a girl's thing, but it's just not mine. Yeah. But it's... It's really difficult when you do come to the realization that no matter what, you do kind of rely on men for money in some aspect. Mm -hmm. But at least with having OnlyFans, I put my price on myself. I put my price on my sexual harassment or my sexual liberation or whatever the fuck people want to call it. I'm putting my own price on my fucking body. Yeah. And it's given me enough financial freedom to where I know that I will never love someone as much as I love Rich ever again. And uh-huh. some people are like, oh my God, that's so sweet. I'm like, no, you don't understand. I will never love a man more than I love myself ever again because I was so wholly, completely consumed by him mm-hmm. that I didn't even know who the fuck I was anymore. I wasn't allowed to fucking talk about scary movies or Steven Spielberg or talk to my mother or have friends because he had to be my whole fucking world. And at the time, that's all I wanted was him. And then it was like, when your person is gone, who the fuck are you without them? Yeah. I had to try to find myself again. I'm still trying to find myself again. And it's been nearly five years since he died. Mm-hmm. So I don't ever want to do that to myself ever again. Yeah. It's, it's fucked. And well, it's hard to be in this place. But it's like, it is liberating. But there is that, that back and forth of like, well, I would like to get married someday if possible. Mm-hmm. But, you know, a lot of guys are like, well, you can't turn a hoe into a housewife. Look at what you're doing. Well, half of you fucking assholes can't afford a house to put a hoe in. And you know who can (laughs) afford a fucking house right now? A hoe. So I'm going to keep on being a hoe or whatever the fuck they want to call it and Mm -hmm. be financially independent, buy myself a fucking house, and either be like the Golden Girls and have a couple of roommates and leave for dick appointments and come back. Yeah. Or magically find a man that will accept me with all of my flaws physically and emotionally and Mm -hmm. like... Accept the fact that I've been through all of the shit and this isn't my first fucking choice in life, but it's the one that I feel is best for me to be able to never be in that position ever again. Definitely. Well, thank you so much for being on. I want you to plug your uh, clothing line so everyone can go buy some shit. So my clothing line is called Positively Evil. It's spelled with an Mm E-V-O-L. So that any time that you take a selfie... Or you look in the mirror, it actually says love. It's all about taking the negative and turning it into the positive. Oh, that's so cute. It was inspired by Rich because he would always say bad things happen to us all the time. You just have to learn to take that negative and turn it into positive. Uh Uh-huh. So even though there's all this negative things that had happened between him and I and all this stuff and all this negative shit that's happened in my life, he very much 
will be a positive influence on me because he definitely made me be more driven Mm -hmm. and in the end a lot stronger person so I, I definitely feel that Things from Positively Evil all have positive affirmations on them. Mm -hmm. They have things on them that are meant to be thought-provoking and get people to really stop and look and say, oh my God, yeah, I got to think about that differently. I have a shirt that says, fake parts, real heart, because it's like, yeah, I got fake tits, but that doesn't mean I'm a bad person. Uh You know, it's it's things like that. Or uh, not an asshole, I just look like one. Yeah. (laughs) So it's just things like that, that it's Uh definitely meant to be more of like a, you know, stop and think about... Mm -hmm how you are projecting yourself and what you're projecting onto other people and how you, how you make other people feel. Yeah. I love that. And then plug your Instagram and OnlyFans. My Instagram is C underscore N O five. And my OnlyFans is under Chanel Renee. Thank you so much for being on. I'm going to give you you a big hug after this. (laughs) Thank you so, so much.